Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys. Uh, welcome back. Um, just wanted to make sure you guys can hear me well. All right, so let's get started. Today's session um, is going to be uh, much smaller uh, than what we had before. Uh, the only reason is I have another session uh, immediately after this. And again, you're welcome to join. Um, so if you are on Twitch, uh, you will see a continuation. Uh, if you are on YouTube, you might have to uh, switch up the channels. The only reason why I kind of do that is, uh, you know, immediately after the session is recorded, uh, the video is processed and it goes live uh, instantaneously. Uh, so I wanted to kind of keep the two topics uh, different. So there are two separate uh, YouTube channels. Uh, for folks on Twitch, uh, you're not going to see anything different. It will just uh, continue to run through uh, this session. Uh, so last time uh, we had looked at uh, a few other ideas of uh, uh, multi-arm bandits. Uh, you know, over the last two sessions, we have gone over the fundamentals. Uh, we have also looked at some of the algorithms. So today, uh, you know, I know some of you suggested that, hey, you know, let's uh, look at an applications. Um, I don't have an application ready yet. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, maybe next time we could do a more fun competition uh, in maybe a week or two uh, where we can, uh, you know, I have thought of two challenges and let me know what you guys think. Uh, the first challenge is, is a dynamic pricing challenge. Um, I will kind of define some boundaries of those challenges. And what I would expect from you guys is fix uh, uh, you know, pick whichever algorithm that you have learned, something that you have done by yourself or uh, you want to play around with something else. Uh, feel free to play with that. Uh, I will give you uh, unlimited number of attempts uh, to play with and, you know, maximize your profit, right? So for your dynamic pricing, you'll have to make sure that you make the most of uh, most profit uh, possible. Um, so how are you going to do that? Uh, so that's one. The other would be a simple uh, website based challenges where hey you know pick a choice of the button and it's not as simple as hey you know we'll keep it black blue uh, what we'll do is we will run through uh, different years uh, sorry uh, different months in a year uh, and every time this the color would change uh, right so you it's not like you find the best algorithm and kind of work that out and and play with uh, so you know Let's say you go in Christmas, we'll pick Christmas colors. Uh, you are in October, we'll play with, uh, you know, the pumpkin colors and we'll kind of work through uh, that logic. So let's see if you can maximize the number of clicks in there. And I would let you play with different algorithms. So uh, I'm finishing my APIs. Uh, they were not working as of this evening. Uh, so I just needed a more time. So does that sound good? Uh, do you, are you guys excited with those challenges? Uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll make it uh, a real reward. Uh, so for people who win it, uh, I will give you, let's say, a JetBrains license and one T-shirt, uh, a Microsoft T-shirt. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, if you like it, uh, you know, let me know in the comments and we can take it up from there. Hey, all right. So Francis, Ankit, Vidya Raman. Um, so let's set that up. Uh, you know, I'll kind of uh, set up the challenges uh, and, you know, kind of make that announcement on Meetup. Um, so if you guys can, uh, you know, join into that session, great. Uh, next week, we have another speaker coming in as well. Uh, she's going to talk about computer vision. Uh, so we'll do that. So uh, let's pick a date uh, that works for all of you. Unless you guys want to do it in the middle of the week, I am okay with that as well. Uh, so today is 6th. How about we do it on 20th? Uh, does 20th of October sound enough time for the challenges? 
the challenges will uh, uh, fill links uh, one two three on twitch uh, the challenges will you know probably just take an hour uh, or two max um, and at least you will kind of you know apply your concepts that you have learned uh, into the algorithms uh, uh, and the challenges that we'll be working through. So think of it as just attempting a few other things as well. I'll give you my solutions as well. Uh, one, because I've coded it. Uh, and second is uh, hopefully, you know, over over that time, you kind of go away from saying that, oh, I understand some of these things and now I'm able to put that into practice as well. Uh, so some of these are very, very close to the examples that I'm working on. Of course, uh, there are a few other uh, challenges uh, in, in those ideas, uh, but they come as close to real life uh, as you can expect. All right, so let's plan for 26th. Uh, yep, so uh, you guys are cool. Uh, so let's, let's get started. Uh, so for today's session, you know, I wanted to focus a lot on Thompson sampling. Um, do you work, do you guys want to do a revision of what we looked at it last time or jump into the papers, jump into the algorithms? Uh, what do you guys want to do? It's a smaller group, so uh, I'm okay either ways. All right, so I will assume there's a slight delay in YouTube today. Um, let's just wait for one more minute. All right, uh, so let's just do a quick run through. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the concepts, uh, but again, if you uh, don't understand uh, or don't quite remember, uh, then we can uh, jump into the specifics. I have the slides. Uh, this is this is this has become my massive uh, multi-arm bandit slide. So you know we can always jump in. Uh, will take me a minute to uh, go through that. So. You guys get this, right? How reinforcement learning works. Uh, it's similar to that of machine learning, uh, but for every observation, it gets a reward from the world uh, that determines, uh, you know, what action it will take uh, uh, take uh, on the world itself. Uh, so the agent itself uh, is the bunch of policies that you have uh, in your machine learning term. Uh, these are your algorithms itself. Uh, your action is, you know, let's say you are working in a classification, so you know what class it is. Uh, but then there's an the instant feedback that goes in. And that's one of the key fundamentals of uh, multi-arm bandit. In the bandit, we always say that, you know, the rewards are not delayed. Uh, you get that immediately. The same, same thing that you have seen, you know, again, a practical example. The re reason why I kind of always keep this slide is this is something that you always absolutely remember, right? for training human beings or training uh, animals, uh, this is how you give them, right? They take an action, you give them a reward. If they do a right action, you give them a, a right reward. Uh, so that's how uh, all of these things uh, work out. And, uh, you know, that's Pavlonian conditioning was the historical idea around multi-arm bandit. All right, uh, we kind of talked about this. Now again, you know, some of the key, key observation uh, at in, at some point in time, you want to kind of do the exploration. Either you can do the explorations early on uh, when you are kind of setting up these policies where you don't know how the game works uh, to get a sense of which arm is going to work the best. Uh, and this is something that you have to keep on looking at it. Uh, you know, there are multiple reasons for this. One is, uh, you know, think of it as your, you know, the challenges that we are going to work on in a couple of weeks time. Your first challenge is going to be, uh, all right, you know, determine the price. Now, the, the demand uh, supply curve is going to change over a period of time, right? So at no point in time, you can say that, oh, I found my best arm. Uh, so I'm going to just, uh, you know, stick with that. You'll have to keep on doing your exploration uh, as well. 
or let's say hey you are you are figuring out hey which uh, which uh, logic uh, to pick up for your button colors uh, then that's something that you are going to work with it as well right so now uh, depending on the seasons you will have to pick hey you know uh, either christmas colors or halloween colors uh, or any other season colors uh, that you might be interested in right so you'll have to keep on doing the exploration of course you can get the context part of it uh, we are not going to look at it right now uh, we'll just focus with the uh, with the multi arm bandits where we don't know what the state is all right uh, we also want to do the exploitation uh, because uh, the idea is that hey you know if you know that a certain arm is giving you maximum profit or certain arm is giving you uh, let me just say hello to some folks uh, and some guys uh, oh, sorry uh, you will have to kind of pick the exploit the best arm uh, let's say in four seasons you are going to work through uh, different button colors or in your pricing challenge you are going to pick the most profitable arm uh, and that's how you kind of work through uh, those logic right so you cannot settle down and say that hey you know my my rewards are constant over a period of time you will see some noise associated with that and with that you will have to kind of do your uh, exploration exploitation um, as well so both of these needs to be in balance your exploration gives you uh, the knowledge uh, to go out and look at other things while exploitation is going to help you maximize the rewards uh, that you are going to uh, get out of those scenarios any questions so far are these concepts clear All right, uh, let's move on. So how do we solve the bandit problem, right? Uh, we have made two simplification. Uh, so we say that, hey, you know, we want to go out and achieve uh, the long-term goals, uh, but we cannot substitute long-term goals. Uh, we have to kind of substitute it with short-term goals because, you know, we said uh, as long as we get the rewards immediately, means the rewards are not delayed. It's a multi, uh, it's a bandit problem. Uh, so we looked at uh, examples earlier i hope you remember uh, some of these things is uh, let's say i'm losing weight i'm going to look at my exercise time if i am looking at my newspaper website i would look at you know how much time uh, did the people spend on it or if i have a channel like youtube i'm going to look at you know how much time did the people view uh, my recommended uh, videos as well and how long did they stay on that right so again the same concepts uh, come into play um, so even for the dogs uh, that we uh, had earlier on is it's not that the first day he's going to pick up uh, go and fetch the ball right you will have to kind of take him through intermediate steps is like hey he goes towards the ball you give him a candy he picks up a ball you give him a candy he brings it back you give him a candy and then he can associate all of those examples of saying that hey you know this is how i can essentially get candy uh, from uh, uh, from my owner the other one is your previous actions are not influencing your subsequent actions right so you watch the video uh, you know there's there's no other influence that that's going to do that if you do that then essentially it becomes a contextual bandit which this is not and again you know a lot of the ideas that you will learn from multi arm bandits can be expanded into conceptual uh, uh, contextual bandits as well so these are the two assumptions that you make one is you are going to take short term rewards uh, the second is your previous actions don't influence your current actions. 
Um, the only way they do it is, you know, the rewards, but that's for the users. Uh, uh, that's for uh, you as a website owner or you as the person driving uh, the world, uh, not for the users itself. All right. So these are your absolutely things uh, that you need to kind of think through. All right. So when we kind of looked at the design itself, right, the agent or the policy itself uh, can make the decision of whether it needs to do an exploitation or whether it wants to do an exploration itself, right? So at each time T, right, your input T is what the agent looks at. It's going to observe the states and these could be internal states as well, right? You have looked at it uh, when we looked at the code itself is that these states were essentially uh, the arm keeping track of the rewards uh, that it has, right? And then it picks an action. Right. Either it's going to pick a best arm or it's going to pick uh, some other arm which is uh, which is not the optimal arm and that could be driven by policy itself. Um, and then that action is the output from the agent itself. Right. So that's all uh, the policy works through uh, the scenario. Now, when we looked at our uh, UCB, uh, you know, we looked at uh, our Epsilon Greedy uh, we looked at some of the variations in those. Uh, and then one of the times where we spent a little bit more logic was around uh, upper confidence bounds, right? So your example, uh, let me just mark it out, right? So this value is essentially your, uh, what we call as average rewards, right? Uh, it's difficult to type with the mouse. All right, let me see if I can type it out. All right, this is this is your average reward, and this is what we call as your exploitation. Right, uh, and you know the the base logic that we had, right, uh, which is where this equation comes in from, is an e inequality which, if you essentially solve it, gives you uh, the exploration part of it, right. So this is your time step T, right? Uh, so if you have taken 10,000 steps or uh, 1,000 steps, uh, that's going to be your time T. And this is the number of times your arm, uh, let's say this was arm two. Uh, so this is going to be N two T. So how many times arm two was picked, all right? Uh, so what, what you're doing is, uh, if you start getting more rewards and you find that uh, your other arms are not going to get picked. This is your policy based exploitation exploration that's going to happen, right? So even though your rewards are larger at some point, you know, at large values of T, uh, if your rewards are practically zero, uh, the value of T will help you dominate pick non optimal arms as well. So this is going to do that policy itself. Now there are a lot of ways in which you could structure uh, these rewards itself uh, and let's say you know I'm kind of prepping you up for your challenges as well right so these rewards right at time t you could say that you know instead of looking at uh, all the rewards that I had from time interval t uh, whatever we are t uh, right so instead of looking at all of that I could say that oh I don't want to look at all the rewards I would want to consider uh, let's say instead of looking at all the T rewards, I would want to look at, let's say last 10 rewards, right? Or maybe five rewards, right? So I'm going to ignore everything that came before that. Uh, and that's also a concept around forgetting factors. Uh, so you could say that, okay, these zero one are not relevant. I'm just going to look at what do I have uh, in my current uh, logic itself and that's what I'm going to look at for my rewards as well. So this way uh, you don't kind of have a very long history of rewards uh, but you are looking at a very very short term rewards itself and you know this is a logic that came in from another algorithm. I don't have it yet uh, but I will share that paper in the chat uh, and this is how the UCB algorithm essentially works and the variations around that. Most of the variations, uh, as you will see in the next page, are got to do with, you know, how do I fix uh, this logic, right? Um, and this is what essentially drives the regret, right? So if you are exploring a suboptimal arm, uh, 
uh, your profit or your clicks might get affected, right? So if it's picking a suboptimal arm, you want to make sure this exploration is as tight as possible and only done when it's needed, right? So in the next next page, we will look at uh, you know what other formulas people have come up with. Uh, I would just like to take a pause here again, see if anyone has any questions uh, before we go on to the details. So there's a question which says, what is the advantage of using the last 10 rewards? Uh, the advantage uh, is that you don't keep a very, very long history of rewards and you are only looking at what happens in your uh, recent uh, few rewards. So let's take an example in here. Let me see if I can draw it nicely, uh, but bear with me on this, right? So let's say, you know, because I was designing the pricing algorithm, uh, uh, I was kind of working through the logic. Uh, so let's say your uh, cost of goods is shown by the purple line, right? And this is your cost. And we will call it dollars. And this is your time T, right? Now, if you keep track of all your historical rewards, uh, which are going back, uh, let's say you are in time interval here, right? And you say that, okay, I'm going to look at all their rewards, right? It's going to pick suboptimal arms all the time, right? So what you want to do is you want to kind of limit that window uh, to a smaller time frame, so that, you know, if the cost changes or if you expect that, you know, the behavior of the user is transient, which is often the case, you can then determine which arm that you want to pick, right? So let's say, you know, in here, you know, your arm, uh, you know, arm with a price uh, 30, uh, sorry, 30 was profitable over here, you know, maybe arm 25 is more profitable, right? Uh, because of the cost, uh, this demand supply cost, right? Uh, so over here, if you had kept all your historical rewards, then your arm always will get a suboptimal arm of 30, right? So you want to make sure that you keep that window long enough so that you pick the, you know, your exploitation is the most instead of exploration, uh, but short enough that you are able to do a decent exploration itself. Uh, are the rewards observation usually the same day or they can be different? They can be, you know, depending on your logic, you could, uh, you know, and we will take a look at one of the algorithms here as well. You can almost do it instantaneously. I showed you an ad. Did somebody click on it? Yes or no, right? Uh, that's your one way of looking at it. In your previous scenario, uh, we had, oh, how much time did the user spend, right? And the user could spend maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, right? So you could kind of wait for, uh, you know, a couple of hours. Uh, to kind of uh, get through uh, that logic itself, right? So you don't have to kind of take your rewards, uh, you know, like immediately, right? The instant can be as far as a day, uh, but there is a limit to where you can kind of uh, call it. Uh, so there's the thing, but I guess if this is just bandit is not stationary, namely changing it prices, right? Yeah, so, you know, just like your, your real life scenarios, right? You will never get a scenario where, uh, you know, your prices are constant throughout, right? Uh, even around some of these prices, you are going to see a distribution, right? Uh, and this is the distribution that you have to kind of think about. Sometimes you might get higher, sometimes you might get lower, right? So uh, your prices, your demand supply is going to change uh, over time, over seasons, uh, over months, 
right so that's something that you have to keep in mind uh, as you go along and you know this is one of the very very common traps that i have seen uh, users do right they assume that it's going to be stationary uh, and you know picking uh, a larger exploitation is a better option uh, so there's a balancing act and this is case by case basis there is no uh, generic solution into some of these things uh, but something that you have to do uh, your own uh, exploration to figure out you know which algorithm will help you do the exploitation better uh, sorry a bad pun in there um, but your prices are non-stationary uh, and that's something that you have to keep in mind right your prices of goods have changed or the seasons have changed or uh, people's liking has changed or you know now us is going through go through an election so you know people want to know more about elections or uh, hey, you know there is there is a major world event that is happening right people want to kind of click on those so there is a lot of transient things that are going to happen and you always want to make sure that uh, you don't keep such a long history that that you know your arms get uh, you know by default they go to suboptimal arms and there is no uh, exploration that happens i hope i kind of answered your questions uh, if not then uh, you know write in the comments uh, I, you know i can maybe spend it spend a few more minutes on that again Uh, so the context part doesn't come into play here. So the question is, so isn't that a contextual bandit uh, because it takes into mind the context. This almost becomes like a pseudo bandit itself uh, where, you know, your history is what you're looking at, right? So you say that, oh, everything happened after last month, forget it. Or you can have a decay in your rewards uh, as well. So these are some of the things that you have to keep in mind as you kind of go through that, right? So I'm kind of bringing you towards contextual bandits. So say links, uh, that's the right approach that I'm kind of getting you towards. It's just that, you know, the same concepts can be applied to contextual bandit, right? There are again a different uh, set of algorithms in there. Uh, just that, you know, I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of that logic itself. So, uh, you know, once we fi finish the challenges, we will go into uh, contextual bandits. All right, so, uh, you know, again, the same thing, you know, I've kind of changed the nomenclature so that we apply on uh, different logic and over here you will see different varieties. Uh, and if you missed out earlier, uh, you know, I had kind of shared the papers on that. And again, if you guys want to kind of jump into the papers, uh, we can do that as well. Uh, so very early on, right? Uh, so there's a big gap between, you know, when uh, some of the papers that you see uh, came out and when some of the latest state of the art uh, things have been coming out right and there's a huge gap between the two right your first paper is 2002 then 9 and then 16 uh, and recently there's been a lot of uptick in the multi-arm bandits as well now when we looked at ucb tune right again you're looking at your average rewards right uh, but over here you know instead of saying that you know the log t and instead of using the value uh, uh, of uh, two over here your vk is a squared of rewards right so over here you start taking the square of the rewards and that's why you know this algorithm becomes much more complex right uh, so your square kind of magni magnifies uh, the effect and in a sense your regret essentially gets minimized uh, because of that because now you're not going to you know do unnecessary explorations uh, and you can be driven by the fact that, you know, how your average rewards uh, come into play. Now, Audibert expanded on that and, you know, he added another term uh, as well, uh, which again takes into time, uh, takes into account the time T and the number of times the arm was played itself. Uh, so in essence, this becomes your exploration term while your average still plays your exploitation uh, term as well. And over here it said, you know, let's do a fixed bound on uh, your terms as well. So now you're going to say that, all right, you know, I'm going to pick a max of zero or uh, these values. Uh, and again, this is purely driven by the times itself, right? Uh, so this is very similar to your UCB uh, and that's why it's called UCB plus where you are going to go look at uh, 
your values uh, that come in from uh, you know how many times the arm was played and just kind of work through that logic all right so uh, last time we played around with bernoulli distribution uh, and we did play around with the examples again if you have not played with it uh, make sure uh, you go about and do that now at this point you know we just have 20 minutes left i want to make sure we do enough justice to uh, you know what we promise we'll do it um, so do you want to you know should i open up a paper and go through it or i have another section uh, which is on thompson sampling uh, and an example for you to work on thompson sampling as well so what do you guys want to do do you want to jump on to thompson sampling or should i read up a paper and by the way thompson sampling is actually a practical thing that you can go home and implement it like right now uh, so it's not like a mathematical derivation or any of these things uh, i have referred the paper um, and you can certainly go and read up the paper uh, but uh, you know just making sure all right so thompson sampling it is okay so we looked at why ucb as well and let's jump into thompson sampling all right so again do you guys remember this algorithm at least the first two steps anyone still remembers the name of this So this was uh, what we call as epsilon greedy and you know the Thompson sampling is based on that uh, but over here instead of you know keeping track of rewards what you do is you keep on updating the probability distribution uh, and you know that's all you end up doing right every time you get a reward or you don't get a reward you will update the probability distribution and based on the probability distribution you will pick the arm right so it's very very similar uh, to that of epsilon greedy uh, and it's based on the similar concepts in there all right uh, so let's start with how thompson sampling works so thompson sampling says that all right so there's a very very important thing your rewards are between 0 and 1 right and i will tell you later on what happens if your rewards are not between 0 and 1 so over here your rewards are binary right so i showed an ad to the user did the user click yes or no i showed the button did the user click on the button yes or no i set the price did the user set the price yes or no right so that's how you would kind of uh, think about it and that success and failures are what is what is uh, get modeled in your thompson sampling so the way you start off with it with the fact that uh, you say that all right we are going to have a uniform distribution and let's say you know i'm picking two colors right i have a black color and a blue color right and i will say that both of them have uniform distribution between zero and one so equal probability of picking zero and one all right so i'm just going to make sure that i merge them and i'm going to do a sample right so i did a sample and i got a reward of one now what I'm going to do is I'm going to update the distribution of blue uh, and say that, oh, you know, I, I sampled one uh, and I got a better answer for blue. So I'm going to pick that. Right. And over here, uh, these two could be my two different arms or two different probabilities or whatever you may think it to be. The next one is I will again go on to the next step. Uh, I will do a sample again and uh, again over here I see that blue wins so I will update the probability distribution for blue right and I keep on doing that and let's say after 10 steps I get a different answer uh, into uh, which I mean this is not how your probability distribution look like but uh, think of it as uh, 
after 10 attempts or 12 attempts that we made uh, your black arm really didn't give you a lot of rewards while your blue arm was giving a lot of rewards for you right so that's why you see that the means are kind of closer uh, the black arm is closer to zero while the blue arm is closer to one now you keep on doing that and again you'll find that your distribution has become much much smoother uh, and you work that out and typically the distribution that they use over here is what we call as a beta uh, and it has two shape factors right one of them is called alpha uh, and sorry let me not do this and the other one is called beta right so these two are your distribution it's similar to you know how you would do your normal distribution as well it comes in from a different family uh, but just so that you know right so your arm is a, assumed to be a, a, a beta arm and you keep on updating that right so your arm gets updated your distribution that is getting updated is using a beta distribution again uh, there's nothing stopping you from using a Gaussian arm or any of these things. But for now, uh, the theoretical concepts were based on the beta arm as well. Uh, so now, the way I would think about this, right? So we had these two factors, alpha and beta. Uh, so what happens if your alpha value is more? Uh, you will get an arm which will be looking something like this, right? Where alpha greater than beta right uh, and i'm saying you know much much larger so let's put uh, something like that right and if you uh, do the converse then you would get an arm something like this where now beta is much much bigger than alpha all right so if you have a value between that your distribution is uh, going to look something like this uh, and then if you had something which is closer to zero your distribution is going to look something like that, right? So this is how you kind of model out and say, um, you know, how your these two arms are behaving, right? So over here, we say that my arms are essentially zero and one, right? That's how I would kind of think about it. Uh, and zero means failure, while one means success, right? And that's how you would kind of look at it. And this algorithm is not my algorithm. This actually comes in from a paper, um, uh, which was published in 2012. Uh, I have it open uh, maybe for a few minutes. Uh, let me just open it um, so I can explain to you, you know, how they kind of look at it. So look at your alpha as failures and beta as success. And then you create an algorithm. Um, you update your distribution with your success and failures. Right. Uh, but what happens if your reward is not between zero and one? Okay. Uh, so we go back and look at, you know, how we did uh, the rewards uh, for Epsilon Greedy. Uh, so what we do is, let's say your reward is not 0 or 1, right? Uh, maybe you're doing some sort of uh, uh, discrete arm or any values that gives you different rewards, right? So what we'll do is, we'll pick a random number between, so I'll get my reward, right? So let's say my reward was uh, 0 0.88, right? Now I'll pick a random number, uh, again, pick whichever logic you want, I'll pick a random number. Now if 0 0.88 is more than uh, the random number pi, then I will increment my beta. So my, uh, sorry, uh, this is the other way around, failure and success. So my success will get incremented by plus one. Uh, if not, then my failure will get incremented by plus one. Right? Uh, Silings, so thanks for kind of sharing that. The Conjugate Prior Wikipedia is a very, very nice uh, article. Uh, again, if you can post the link in the chat, that would be amazing uh, while I'm kind of going through that. So this is how uh, you can kind of take a Thompson sampling and apply it to your practical logic where your rewards is not necessarily uh, good enough. Let's say, you know, uh, you showed... Uh, a video uh, let's say you're building a recommendation system uh, you still want to do thompson sampling right uh, but thompson sampling is only working with alpha and beta right and now you say that oh i'm going to look at my session time so you would say that all right you know what is my session time average session time going to look at so if somebody spends more time uh, it should essentially be one if it spend less time than a threshold it should be zero right but then you have something in between where you don't know whether you want to put it to zero or whether you want to put it to one 
uh, and this logic that's there uh, is uh, is working through uh, that logic similar to what you saw in epsilon greedy uh, and you work out and say that all right let's pick a random value compare that with reward and then figure out whether you want to increment uh, failure or success all right so we looked at uh, multi amp bandits uh, overall uh, and kind of looked at Thompson sampling. I have a quick example uh, for you to play with. Again, uh, let me put the GitHub link uh, in the chat and the conjugate priors as well. Uh, so you guys are able to uh, share that. And again, in the meanwhile, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. So the code is here. I have pushed in the latest as of today and let me pull out the Wikipedia link as well. Uh, sorry, I was not know. I didn't know that you could not pick uh, the code in there. Uh, you cannot paste links. I think there are some people on links, uh, Twitch as well. Uh. All right, let's jump into the code um, and let me jump in here. Let me zoom in. So in, um, in your uh, Thompson sampling, right? We said that we need the posteriors for the arms, right? So over here you are going to create a posterior and for now i just have a beta uh, uh, distribution right so the logic that i mentioned right uh, you know it's there in this paper so if you look at this paper from agarwal uh, where uh, they kind of talked about this logic um, it's in there right so if your reward is zero then you return zero if it's one it returns one if it's between zero and one, then it does what we do for epsilon greedy, right? Uh, so your epsilon greedy with proba uh, probability, uh, we said that it returns true if a random value is less than epsilon. If it's greater, uh, uh, if it's less than, it returns false, right? So the same logic, uh, we use that. Now, when we want to do an update, right? We have this beta variate where we say that, you know, I'm going to use my alpha and betas. Um, to keep on updating my uh, beta distribution. So that's all there is to it, right? So I kind of give a beta variate where my N um, is my A's and B's and that's how I keep on working through my logic, right? So that's how simple it is to implement, uh, you know, beta distribution and Thompson sampling into your model itself, right? Uh, so when I start the game, I do a re reward and then when I kind of get a reward, I update my arm, right? So I update the posterior of the arm and then increment my T, right? So this is where I'm kind of, you know, looking at my amplitude. So if the reward is between zero and one um, or if the reward is zero or one. So that's all there is to it is in Thompson sampling. Um, there is nothing there. I just have a very simple sample in here as well. So now when I go through my logic, sorry, okay, I'll have to close a few files. And um, over here, you know, you cannot use Bernoulli arms. So I have to set up arms as two uh, and I can go and define individual arms uh, where I can pass in those parameters as well, or I can just generically uh, pick uh, my failures and success, which are my A's and B's itself, right? Um, and let's just run through this again, just like before, um, you will get to see different variations in there. 
uh, and over here my second arm essentially should be picked much more right or my choice number one so you do see that my choice number one is picked more often than not uh, and that's how Thompson sampling works, right? So nothing, nothing fancy. Uh, you keep on using your success and failures uh, to keep on updating your beta distribution, uh, which again is done out of the box. Any questions so far? Any, any, anything you guys have on your mind uh, that you want to clarify? And this is the paper uh, that we have, uh, which is where the logic was. So this was the algorithm two. Yep. So this is how uh, they have kind of defined it, right? So they say that, okay, success is set to zero, failures is set to zero uh, for each arm sample theta from the beta distribution, where you start off with success plus one and failure plus one, and then play that arm and observe the reward. So if the reward is S, you pick S plus one, else F by T. And then, you know, the logic for anything beyond that is fairly straightforward. So this is uh, the paper from 2012. Um, and yeah, any questions with anyone? Yes, so we are doing that for each arm um, uh, over here. Uh, again, you know, uh, maybe let's see. So over here, your arm selection. Okay, uh, I think I might have to go into a little bit of the code uh, itself. Um, so what you are looking at it is, you know, you are setting each arm with the same posteriors. Right. Um, I can say that, all right, you know, I could pick params for each posteriors and then say that, okay, my A and B for each arms are different. Uh, I will post an example uh, probably later on um, after this session is over uh, and show you how you can work with uh, different uh, success failures for each of those arms, right? So you don't have to say that, okay, you know, my distribution remains the same for all the arms. Uh, and I have to pick the best arm at the moment um, as well, right? Uh, so you can work through that logic. Uh, it's actually fairly simple, uh, but again, you know, I just have two minutes uh, before I need to jump off uh, to the other session. Um, but yeah, again, we can, we can again review it if you guys uh, still don't understand the code. Uh, this video will be there in YouTube, so you can leave me a message and I will be more than happy um, to answer that uh, and then in case you want to uh, reach out to me uh, let me give you an alternative uh, you can search me on LinkedIn uh, and my name is Setu Choksi I am based in Singapore so you can look me up All right, so that's all I have for today. Um, I hope I will see you guys in two weeks uh, with a competition. I will make an announcement. Again, no registration required. I just need to make sure my APIs are working fine. Uh, today they were giving me some crazy numbers. Uh, even I couldn't compete with myself. Uh, 
but anyways i'll see you in two weeks time so on 20 uh, sorry on 28th october uh, let's collect again uh, let's do this fun game uh, with real rewards uh, i will actually give you a physical reward um, and hopefully you are able to apply these concepts into really practical examples that you might come across uh, for those who want uh, want to join the other session which is on augmented reality uh, he is another colleague mvp colleague of mine uh, there's another youtube link uh, that will go live in just a moment or if you are on twitch uh, you can you know just stay put i will be online in a couple of minutes all right so i'll see you guys later uh, it was really nice having this interaction with you uh, i want to do more of these thompson uh or sorry multi arm bandits uh, examples uh but let's see how time permits and uh, what other topics that you guys are interested in all right uh i will see you guys in a moment and for those who are joining me in youtube uh you know go back to my channel uh, subscribe to my channel so you can go back and you will see another link come up live in just a moment all right see you guys it was nice having you all back um and see you in two weeks Bye bye